welcome welcome to our sunday the 26th of december uh, this year's so called the last interaction between you and me though we are always available on telephone always available spiritually and i know that all of us are get connected in the morning early morning in the meditation time with the supreme the space the sky the air the water the earth with the five elements of this universe and you and me and all of us as one that one consciousness 2021 has brought in a lot of challenges for all of us particularly with the covid-19 strives and struggles and suffering and sickness and sadness for the loss of many of our beloved ones especially toton who used to come all the way from mumbai and dedicated his life he is still with us i am not of this is not a belief it is just knowingness it is just being aware he is with us and his spirit his consciousness as your consciousness and spirit right now with each one of us it all be there will always be there it is a misnomer that we are this body we are this mind and we are this name and form this is not who we are yes we support we support yes we carry and we conduct in this so called recollecting the mandakya upanishad the 31st verse of the third chapter in which we are talking about that govind pada that is shankaracharya's guru is being told by gaurapada who is the guru's guru of shankaracharya and guru of govind pada is telling atma satyana bodhena when you truly realize your atman who you really are nasakalp yateyada manasso hi avani bhavi that is the time you would truly realize you will understand who you really are and once you understand we would know that we are not limited by a little totan body robin gosh body or any body we are eternal and we shall do that meditation on further and further on that with the mandakya upanishad the challenges of the strives of the covid-19 all over the world it is put in lot of challenges for everyone family whether anybody we had affected or we did not have but the life conditions change the whole world whole country our way of living never was it ever a sickness became a blessing to almost for most of the families never did we ever the mother and the father the husband and the wife and the children ever stayed together so close knit for so long so it has been a blessing a beautiful blessing in which the development took place of the atma satyana bodhena the the inner core feeling of who we really are and this is the search in the spiritual world we would do little more on the meditation on that i shall get on to today if we have little more time we shall reflect back to the end of the the very very powerful the the sermon by which jesus christ talked to all of us about how to make this earth a heaven and in which if you look carefully it is not by going out and earning money it is not going out and making our name and fame 
or picking up relationships. It is knowing that whatever sufferings we have, the experiences of the world outside, whether it is heavenly, beautiful, good, healthy, or the terrible experiences of the people around, it's all because of experience of the world from outside to us, whether of the beloved or of the terrible enemy, it's all because of the state of our mind. And this is the understanding from the Vedanta and supported by the sayings of the Jesus Christ. So this is where, once again, Atma Satyana Bodhena, the moment we realize who we really are, then our mind, we realize, is not the ruling guy, but the mind needs to be trained like the elephant needs to be trained. The wild elephant is very powerful. The poor little man, Maho, sitting on top of it, can't control him because the elephant is very powerful. And the man who is riding it is very small. Elephant, he wants it to turn to the left, but elephant wants to go to the right to a, maybe a banana groove and eat bananas there. Where, where the training comes. And that is where the purity of mind comes. And once we are purer and purer, you'll find that the clearer and clearer the water becomes and you can see through. You can see through who we really are. Let us take on a little bit of the journey with this slide that we are taking on. We have some very good questions. And the, the question one uh, comes in that to understand the process of attaining the self-knowledge, the attainment. The questioner is telling me, the devotee is telling me, I understand that we have to get out of this thought first, the wrong understanding that my body and the mind is the self or the Atman. I understand that, he's saying that. And secondly, he says that one gains the understanding that myself is not different than any other self. So any other soul and the spirit in this entire universe, whether human beings or animals or plants or any non-living creature that do have consciousness, only thing, let's say this table, this computer, they too have consciousness as per Advaita Vedanta, but they do not have the Sukshma Sharira. Sukshma Sharira are the Pranamaya Kosha, the Annamaya Kosha, the Manamaya Kosha, the Gyanamaya Kosha, the Anandamaya Kosha. They are the koshas, the body, it's not just the physical body, but along the physical body, we have other bodies, which is with us. When we die, when I die, my physical body will stay. It will not disintegrate unless a human action is taken to disintegrate it through fire or burning in the ground. Nature, if it is left into the open air, nature will send birds and animals and the weather for it to deteriorate would take a long time. As for the custom, body is burnt up. But there is the Sukshma Sharira, which is the one which is conducting a huge amount of the consciousness. And that Sukshma Sharira forms like a bubble and goes out as per the Vedanta, takes the new form in some of the religious beliefs, like Christianity, like Islam, there is only one birth. But as for the Hinduism and many other religions of the world, like Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, these are births again and again and again take birth. This bubble goes and takes rests for a while, sleeps for a while, and then takes rebirth based on their own karma of the earlier, which they have carried in the Sukshma Sharira. 
mano buddhi chitta ahankar they carry it with them and rebirth and this is why you find the two brothers or brother sisters or maybe six brother sisters each one of them have different characteristic though the mother and the father is the one and in that second step that realize is that this consciousness atman brahman is one with everyone remembering the examples of earlier the waves and the ocean the waves are different each one of the oceans are different the content in the water in the pond or the river or the puddle on the street or mount himalaya a big lake each content of the the pond rain ocean appears to be different some are salty some are sweeter but the water content is the one and the same water same water so here is question came in that i am looking at a green leaf i see it green my consciousness is same as mr b mr b looking at another leaf which is in yellow leaf now the my devotee is selling that look i know that the consciousness is one with both but i am with that same consciousness i am seeing the green leaf as green and the other with the same consciousness is seeing an yellow leaf as yellow then how is this consciousness discriminated is the main question so here the answer as we dealt with it for those who were present of the thursday talk it is the consciousness is one with everyone but what is discriminating the seer the viewer the drashta of the yellow leaf is not the consciousness is powering the viewer of the yellow leaf minds and intellect and experience and the eye which is different so yellow leaf viewers mind intellect buddhi memory is different then let's say i am viewing the green leaf then my mind and my experience and my intellect is different consciousness powering the same same electricity is powering this camera powering this computer powering the light powering the air condition they're all different different object but the ac is the same consciousness is the same power behind not really a very close example because electricity is a very small thing compared to the consciousness infinite present everywhere sarva vyapi anantam advaitam it's the same beautiful the question comes in here that i would like to understand how this individual consciousness is related to that of the other and how is this atman within being aggregated as brahman so he is going on to say if i am the turiyam then who is the doer and who is this insightfully who is running the universe so here comes in the vedanta the sankhya philosophy gives this question and the answer that it is duality but in the advaita it is non dual the waker the sleeper and the dreamer and the deep sleeper a tree existence which you and i are living every day this is my waking world in which play is going on i'm playing various roles as a mother as a father as a professional as a son as a daughter as a name as my characteristic as my qualification i'm playing a role i'm playing the same when i go off to sleep and then i dream my body and the mind stays there but i have another mind body and go into another world and then i'm experiencing the dream and the sleep state as the dreamer 
but I am experiencing it only because of my fourth state, the Turiya state. Uh, just one second. That state that we are experiencing, it is because of the consciousness, my Chetana. And I'm experiencing this waking world, various ways, good, bad, strife, struggle, suffering, sickness, success, and enjoying, having fun called samsara. But shant man me santan, Sangsar kisne dekha hai bala. Remember the words of the holy monk from the Mount Himalaya. Shant man me. If my mind is calm, the strifes and the struggles may continue, whether in the so called world outside or in my body. But my mind is calm and I know, Atma Satyana Bodhena, I know my, my true nature. Though it is powering, that awakened state. Now the awakened state power, the dream state power, are two different states Rabin Ghosh is living. But it is actually the consciousness which is powering. It is, and then the third state comes in, is the experiencing the blankness, experiencing no experience state, deep sleep state, Mind has gone off to sleep. Senses have gone off to sleep. I'm in deep sleep state, but I'm experiencing a blackness. I is who? I. Atma Satyana Bodhina, my fourth state, the Turiyam. Recollect Turiyam word is actually Chaturtham in the Upanishads, but Gaurapada had brought out this name called Turiyam. Turiyam means the fourth. The fourth state actually is experiencing the waking, the dreaming, and experiencing the blankness to the deep sleep. But it is like a, an actor going into the stage. And sometimes you've seen in many films when one actor plays multiple roles, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, like that. That same I am playing every day, the waking, dreaming, deep sleep act. But once I know that I am not any one of them, what happens? I'm detached now. I have the mind, I have the body, I have the name and the form and the function. I'm playing all the role, but now I pay 10 out of 10, 100% is my performance state. Going into the oneness and all these, that oneness is the status with which the individual to the cosmic aligning that I am doing it in the Advaita Vedanta says, you are the pure consciousness, this oneness. And everybody else is that you are the same pure consciousness, whether dead or whether alive, whether inanimate or animate. Only inanimate objects do not have a sukshma sharid, but the plants, animals, you and me, we have the sukshma sharid. So that is why the chaitana, the consciousness is very strong for us to understand. And going into this identification with the body. And the second is deeply ingrained sense of that differences that we and the other people, everybody else is separate. I'm separate than others. The moment I give myself a name and form, I am Robin Gush. <laughs> I'm separate from you. And this is that called samsara. This is the duality. And in that meditation state, we should practice again and again. It's a very powerful meditation. Practice it, get expertise on that. That oneness is what we need to get onto our system strongly. Different ways of seeing this. You can see it differently. 
whatever is an object, I cannot be, I'm driving my car. I know I'm driving my car. I know I'm using my computer or the mobile. I know I'm not the car. I know I am not my mobile or my computer. The difference is between drashta and drishya. Go over it again and again and again till it becomes a form understanding and reality. When somebody else talks about it to be the difference, that you are different, you would only have a smile. It depends on the level of understanding of that person where you should be able to take them across or not take them across. Just one second. So because it appears to me as an object, we consider the body to be also an object. Now, when I say my body is an object, who is it an object to? To my senses. My senses are perceiving. I sense this clock. So it is an object to my eye and my touch feeling. Same way the body and that in turn goes to the brain and to the mind and tells I am separate with my this name, this age and this form. So intellectual conclusion is what we make us feel to be different. And in which here we need to, that the body should also feel that we should also notice that the body as not me. And that is why the meditation, that meditation which goes on to very powerfully, we shall start in a few minutes. So the witness consciousness, drashta, eliminate the body from myself. Once you realize that, the concept goes away. This is what it meant by Atma Satyana Bodhena. That if I'm experiencing my thoughts, my love, my hatred, my anger, my jealousy, I'm experiencing them. I'm experiencing my mind. The mind cannot be me. I'm experiencing my body. My body cannot be me. And the subtle objects, the closer and closer as we see, I realize the gross body, the subtle body, thoughts and mind of the object, because they're objects, it cannot be me. I cannot be the mind and I cannot be the, I may be driving the car, I am not the car. I'm driving my body as an app. I'm driving my, those five senses. And Panchakosha Viveka, those of you who attended the Thursday session, those five layers, the food layer, called Annamaya Kosha, the vital layer called Pranamaya Kosha, the mental layer called the Manamaya Kosha, the intellect layer called the Vijnanamaya Kosha, and the beyond that is the blankness called Atmamaya Kosha. And none of these I am. I am the witness consciousness of all this. With this understanding, dreaming in deep sleep, waking state. Each one comes from the world and for its body and the mind. Your experiences are the consciousness that we are experiencing is suddenly of a state of waking or which is coming complete with its body, mind, the world outside, my people, my family, my friends and problems also the relationship. This is how our world samsara, the world outside. But the whole thing disappears and a new state emerges. And that same unchanging state from the waking, I go on to the dream state as I go off to sleep. And from there disappears into the blankness called the deep sleep state, unchanging the darkness but I realize I am not the darkness. I'm not this new state of dream. I'm not the waking state. I am that light which is behind. So if you experience saying, think 
about a blankness on your thought and try and go as you practice in the meditation go beyond that blankness you will find a wall of darkness and as you concentrate just like those of you have been with your sadhana opened up your eye you must have noticed that you realize you see suddenly with the same eye and the third eye you see those who are chanting omkar or gayatri mantra a deep blue and a silver light is emanating from the person and when we chant and do the meditation of the omkar it is emanating from each one and not only just emanating from each one it is going into everybody and engulfing them and taking them into a beautiful state of sublime state of purity there is the power of this mantra and this that unchanging light is that one that you witness then now the problem comes in after all this intellectual understanding intellectually i'm understanding it but i still feel i have discovered a consciousness apart from my body and the mind in this body and the mind are you with me i have discovered a state of consciousness in this body and the mind that means i have heart i have liver i have you know arms and legs just like that i have body i have mind and i have consciousness in this body no this is wrong understanding it is the consciousness alone has created the existence of this body and the consciousness alone is experiencing the existence of this body as mind as name and the form male female the various states of name various age various description this states of individually sense of different comes from the identification of the body and the mind so very good example go gorupada gives it imagine lots of pots or then clay pot they have various if you look at these clay pot various little little mouths now from imagine this is called ghatakasha as per the vedantic in i am looking from the pot infinite blue sky on top like today but if i am looking from the ghata akasha the ghata the pot its akasha is only limited like that little mouth i can only see that much of the sky just like you and me we are like that we are like that pot it's a simile to understand it which god of other giving us but the sky is infinite blue and two lessons to be learned from here one that is called chidakasha infinite blue and this is ghatakasha so we think that we are only this much is the consciousness unlimited in this body and the mind whereas this is one the chidakasha the infinite sky is infinite limited second thing is if i am moving the pot there is a space inside the pot there is space entire universe space right there is space inside the pot i am moving the pot understand is the pot moving along with it is the space inside the pot moving a very powerful important point in advaita vada please understand pay <laughs> full attention if the pot is moving pot has got space pot may have milk or water whatever the milk or the water with the pot and there is space please pay absolute attention it took me some time to understand it if i move the pot the milk or the water with the pot is moving what is happening to the space inside the pot is it moving with the pot or 
is the pot moving through the space, space remains the same. Which one is it? Most people would think the space is also moving with the pot because pot is enclosed that space. This is exactly what I said just now a little while ago. We think that we are the name and the body and the form and consciousness. And my consciousness is different than your consciousness. Which is the mistake? Consciousness is one. Consciousness is eternally present. Consciousness is not moving. It's not a part of me. But consciousness has made me with the existence and the chitana, chitya, consciousness. It's made me. But consciousness is everywhere. Akasha in the pot is not encased by the pot. The pot moves through the space. Space remains as it is. What is the understanding here? When I die, my body dies, consciousness remains. And when I am reborn, as per the Vedantic belief, I will once again start utilizing the consciousness present over there. Another understanding. Let's say this glass has some water. And space on top. There is space and there is water. This is space all around. Correct? I am moving this glass from here to here. The water is not spilling. Otherwise, it will make a mess. Water is encased in the glass. It is moving. What about the space which was here when I was holding it here? And when I moved it here, has the space moved with the glass? Our ignorance says, yes, it is moved, but it is not. The space over here has remained. Another very simple example, Pune city, most of you have seen. A few decades ago, there were very few buildings. In Karate, it was total jungle where our school was the first building. There was nothing, no road, nothing at all. Today, it, it, uh, one of the fastest growing suburban going there, World Trade Center has come up. What happened to the space before, which was jungle and where nothing else, open air, open space? We would say, generally, ignorance will say, space is occupied by the building. Space is occupied by the building is what is the ignorant mind says. Now, space has grandly permitted the buildings to come into the space without dislodging the space. Space remains. The powerful example of this meaning is consciousness remains, is not moving with the body. And this Space is not demarcated by the pot, by the body, by the buildings, or by the well. If I'm inside a well or inside that ghata kasha, when I look, it appears to be limited, but the space, the sky remains, and space is not in them limited. The consciousness does not move along with the body and the mind. When we're doing the meditation, understand that is the Turiyam, Chaturtham, which is we who we truly are. And I am experiencing it in, and so are, I know many of you must be, that when you get connected to that, suddenly the discomfort of aging, decay, sickness, disease, poverty, financial stress, problem in the family, relationship, problem in the office, everything seems to go away. And <laughs> when you come out of it, they are still there. But suddenly you come out as an emerged enlightened being, not fully bodhisattva, but understanding that I am not this name, body and form. You perform now 10 out of 10 in every one of the roles. Earlier, I may have been a five as a father and a six as a professional and four as a friend and a three as a son and 10 as a 
knowledgeable without this maybe but now you perform 10 out of 10 out of 10 out of 10 in every role why because you're detached you are not attaching yourself labeling yourself and casting like the pot you're not a wave anymore you realize i'm the water the paramahansa buddha jesus christ mahammad mahavir jain guru nanak ramana maharshi who are they they still in case with that body and the name and the form they are alive they discriminate their disciples separately by the name and the form but they know they all are same consciousness we all are as a one that water or the space or the sky that if you consider the consciousness itself the awareness itself not limited by the different bodies and the mind then you are that enlightened being and taking the journey and understanding i'm not this body i'm not this mind mano buddhi chitta ahankar na aham chidanand roopo ham shivo ham shivo ham shankaracharya's poem is going ahead and talking about it that it is an ocean of existence before us that existence is because of the brahman sat chit ananda existence consciousness bliss brahman is taking us across so the ocean of shining awareness which we are no difference and now we go into practice thousands of ways but when you consider the water it is the water differentiated into thousands of ways the water is one there are no boundary in the wave there is boundary but in the water there is no boundary expanse is a vast expanse vast sky vast recollect our earlier discussion brahman brahman means vast vast meaning no limit and limits are desha kala vastu space time and object <laughs> i am here not with you because i am limited by this body i am in this time i am not 100 years back or 100 years from today samay kala and vastu object i am this body i am not the computer i am not the glass i am not the clock and when you go beyond them you suddenly realize unlimited expanses of being awareness satyam gyanam anantam brahman undivided in all being appearing you are undivided in all being you are appearing as divided because of our mind our intellect our buddhi and how undivided like one unbroken mass of water or space or gold or a clay pot clay in any part of the pot these are the examples which is given uh, by the vedanta for us to understand it easily you say i am the knower and i am the one who experiences this body god says another angle i am the one who experiences this body god is brahman and i am saying i am experiencing this body i is who my consciousness so now understand i have now gone past that our original earlier talk of today i realize i am the consciousness and as per dvaita vad god says i am the consciousness i am the one who is experiencing your body i am also saying i am experiencing the god body so what does it mean you and god are one and the same advaita not two dvaita is two the moment you see advaita in you in your son in your daughters in your husband in your wife in your friends in your people who are working under you you are a great karma and a gyana yogi and through the raja yoga you practice and go into that meditative state 
and reasoning and experiences will be differentiated by the consciousness of this consciousness chetana with the logic and understanding you will realize yes atma satyana bodhina i understand now and that understanding is not limited that my consciousness is mine as like my name and mind and body but it is one consciousness is in different body different name different form so what happens duality goes away the moment duality goes away oneness comes in and that is called realization bodhisattva nirvana moksha even in the journey as you are proceeding even if you are doing it little bit you will identify yourself with that one body mind conflict during this journey itself and you will see like this brilliant that there is only one reality like the lamp the compared to this physical body i've experienced i've talked about the experiences of the water compared to the subtle body the mind and subtler than all of them and pervading in everything is the consciousness to the extent it shows existence of these things so there is a little problem in these examples that we take paramam shri ramakrishna used to say examples are only for examples for us to understand it the water pot are nothing different than the space itself that existence that consciousness has created the pot also and the space also there is no difference so there is earth there is water there is space there is fire there is air and as per the ancient ancient cosmology in the upanishad it talks about space emerges from air and air emerges fire and the fire emerges water you'd be surprised the fire and water are opposite but as per ancient space emerges air air emerges fire fire emerges water and from water emerges earth all five are actually one but emerges from that same subtle consciousness and same thing is the what for the pot the clay pot or the ocean or the wave it is all emerging from that one consciousness this is a beautiful journey taking on the examples to understand difference of space pot water consciousness from body mind oneness in space oneness now with all these understanding we will experience that meditation we would take about 15 20 minutes of let's do some experience let's see how does it go recollect we are since we have done this practice before we are the consciousness we are the chaturtham the turiyam which is experiencing who we think we are the awakened state jagrat we are experiencing the dream of the sleep state the sapna we are experiencing the deep sleep state called sushupti the we you and i as the one i am experiencing that i is my chaturtham turiya is experiencing all three and experiencing it how because of the awareness consciousness of of my i so actually through the maya the counting of waking state is one dream state is two and sleep state is three comes the fourth state is the thorium but now look at it as we go into the meditative state this understanding for us to go to that very famous statement of gaurapada atma satyanu bodhina na sankalpa yate yada we will see the differences are not there i am that awareness without that consciousness awareness you cannot listen 
you cannot do, you cannot see, you cannot experience your family, member, relationship, learn anything, do anything, live. When I am dead, my consciousness is zero. When I am in coma, slightly better consciousness, hardly realized. When I am unconscious state, it is slightly better consciousness than dead or the coma, but still I cannot perceive the world. In deep sleep state, mind has gone up to sleep, senses have gone up to sleep, but I have a consciousness when I wake up, I say I had a wonderful sleep. How do I know that? That consciousness, what in Vija Avastha Upanishad says, it was in a seed form. That seed form now expresses itself as a dream state and as the wake state and a deep sleep state. Waking, dreaming, deep sleep. That seed from the thurium is coming in through the deep sleep, awakened and, and dream state. Now, in the awakened state, I cannot do anything unless I'm aware, unless I'm conscious, unless I'm focused. Focus is that consciousness focus. If I'm not aware, that awakened state is gone. If I'm not aware in my dream state, it is gone. So actually, you cannot count the unreal with the real. Real is thurium. Our waking state we say, no, it's a dream state. How can we say dream state? I'm experiencing, I pinch it, pains. How do we say that? This is the understanding what we need to realize. Yes, when I pinch, my five senses are working. I feel the table, I feel the world, I feel my people, my husband, my wife, my children, my money, the bank, the property, car, my mobile, my computer. I'm experiencing it, sure. Now understanding it, that if the awareness was not there, this world does not stay, is not there. I, that means if it was real, what is real? Real is something which never changes, never goes. Famous example, hot potato. We love to put butter and eat it, no? Hot potato gets its heat from where? The hot water. So hot potato's heat is not intrinsic quality. It's a borrowed quality. Like the waking state, borrowed from the awareness, consciousness. Dream state. Hot water got its heat from the hot pot. And the hot pot from the hot fire. Hot Pot is also borrowed. Hot water is also borrowed quality. They are mithya as per Upanishad Vedanta. They are not real. Satya is only fire. Fire has got its intrinsic quality. You take the fire to North Pole or Iceland or South Pole or in here Pune city, it is hot. It's truth. The truth shall never change. Satya me jayate. Truth will always win if we can hold on to that understanding of the truth. So because of this understanding, the waking state, dream state, deep sleep state, one, two, three, are actually not one, two, three. They're only one of the expression and awareness of the Torya. Now, when you understand that, though in the real world, you're continuing to live, your body's not going to vanish just because you get you know, you become enlightened Paramahamsa. The body is not going to vanish. Paramahamsa, Ramakrishna, Buddha, they continue to live for a long time. But their awareness of the body, of the wakeful state is different now. And they realize this is not I am. Atma Satyana Bodhina. And in the step two, see that the body and the mother, there's nothing separate than that underlying consciousness. So, the Sat, the pure being, alone appears in the mind and the body. With that, let's take on to this meditative state. Everybody ready? You settle down comfortably. Sit 
pull yourself back with your back straight. Keep your arms crossed. Depending on your house, where you are, you may chant along with me loudly or you may do it silently. We are going to do Omkar meditation. In the Omkar, recollecting the past practice, Om comes as per Mandaka Upanishad, 31st and 32nd Tutra from Mandaka Karika of Gaurapada is A, U, A, and M. Mm. Om is A, U, M. Mm. A is the waking state. As we experiencing this play of the waking world, U, as we experiencing the dream state and the dream world, sleep state, and mm, as I'm experiencing the blankness of experiencing, blankness of experiencing, absence of experiencing, I'm also experiencing. Void of experiences, I'm also experiencing the voidness from activity, isn't it? So that experiencing voidness, dream state and waking state is a, uh, u and mm. And Mandaka Upanishad is telling us, this is not who we are. We are the Chaturtham. We are the silence after that. This is the silent time when you're taking a deep breath. Automatically, every time, we will practice also in the silent state. Let's start. Take three breaths like you would do every day. We haven't gone through those practices in these steps, but in the true Vedantic meditation, take three to six breaths and focus your scattered mind to that one point of the entire presence right now to the breath. Follow the breath. Take three breaths. Right over left, shoulders pull back, chin parallel to slightly above. Recollect, if the chin is below, we get a lot of negative thoughts. If chin is parallel to the ground, the practical world, the samsara comes and bombards. But if chin is slightly above, you will find a divine. Immediately light will shine on the forehead. The differences. Three breaths. Remembering with our pranam to the Divine Mother, Krishna, Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, Mahavatar, Babaji, the Deathless Master, our beloved Gurudevas, Paramang Sri Yogananda, Sri Sri Yukteswar, Giri, Lari Vasai, Swami Sri Vivekananda, Holy Mother Sharada, Paramang Sri Ramakrishna. We take the journey with Asanga Aham, Asanga Aham, Asanga Aham. Puna, 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 Asanga Aham. I am totally detached. I am the thorium. I'm taking myself to the experiences of the Jagrat, Sapna, Shashukti, to thorium silence. Starting the chant, I'm going to chant loudly. You choose as per your surrounding silently or loudly. Eyes are closed, focus between the eyebrow to the tip of the nose. Take a deep breath. Oh. Again. 
And who put together is O. The first part of the Omkar, I experience the body, the name, the mind, the objects. I experience with my awareness, I know it is the awareness which is experiencing this body. Like an actor on the stage, realizing the problems of the body, the sickness and the disease is of the body. The relationship problem, the office problem, the financial problem is of the body. Into the deep dream state is the changes of the thoughts and the feelings of the love and the joy are of the dream state of the mind. Going into the mm, experiencing the darkness of experience of the blankness is of the deep sleep state is the third Shushupti. Because of my awareness of the Chaturtha of the silence. I'm experiencing the waking, the drama, the play of the samsara. I'm experiencing the duality of the mind and the body of various people. But I know because of the chaturtham, we are not separate. We are one alone with a different body and the name and the form and the dream state and the deep sleep state. We are one alone exists. Ekam eva advaita. Ekam eva advaita. Again, chant. Oh. Again, oh. again. I am the awareness in which the waking state is appearing. I am that awareness consciousness in which the dream state of this body and the name and the form is experiencing. Appearing as the waking and the dream in my awareness. Appearing as the waking dream and the deep sleep and the darkness of the deep sleep appearing in my awareness. My awareness is always Shantam Shivam Sundaram. I am that consciousness, Chaturtham. I am that silence. Once again, we'll chant and then be silent. Oh. 
Again. Oh. Mind with intellect, ego, memory, appearing in the consciousness with the awakened state, dream state, and the darkness of the deep sleep state into the light, brilliance of light that I am. Shantam Shivam Sundara. I am that calmness. I am the silence. Become aware of the awareness is who I am. I'm playing the role because of the awareness through the existence, making me experiencing this world. I have work to do, fulfill the purpose of my life, through this body, the mind, and the name and the form, for the welfare of the other people. I am pure, I'm truthful. I am the epitome of the love and the kindness. I am one, the Chaturtam. This consciousness, is what I experience is God, Ishvara, is that experience. God and I are one consciousness. Again, <laughs> Shantam, the silence is like the water in every part of the ocean, in every part of the wave, is in everyone around me, in everything is my consciousness. When I relate myself to that consciousness, 
I'm kind and caring to every other object and living being and human relations. I realize if only I allow the will of others to play before my own will, I become one with them. There is no wall of separation of you and I. Your will as good as mine because I am you. An infinite sense of well-being, of love. Well-being, feeling of goodness. A calm, cool feeling of peace, of being one with everyone, with a smile and a knowingness. I'm not separate from you. How can that love be separated? Even when I die, when my body is cremated and is thrown into the air with every leaf moving, that love through my consciousness will merge with that oneness. Even if I'm buried in the ground, the grass, the flowers on the ground will sway with that same one consciousness, one awareness with the world outside. That I is not this body, not this name, not this form, with a separate consciousness. That I is one consciousness, just like the one mass of sky, one mass of water. Take a deep breath. As you're ready to open your eyes for today's practice. Bring that awareness and which of the silence into the day-to-day -day activity, the waking state and the sleep, deep sleep state. I continue to play the role of the actor with intense love and care for everyone. When you open your eyes gently at your own knee or at your own palm. And then when you open, open with love and smile to the world outside. And as you keep on increasing this quantum of peace within through this Nididhyasana, Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam. You will find a great change will come to your physical well being. There will be a cool feeling of love for everyone and not a separatedness of I am separate, but oneness will increase. And that love and tranquility will retain throughout the day in whatever we do. Your body, chemicals, the neurons, the particles would change to align for you and me to fulfill the purpose of this life on this earth. And that is only one. To become one with God in this life alone. 
in Swami Vivekananda's words, his words for the monks and the brahmacharis and the grahars like you and me. Atmanamokshartham Jagat Hitayacha. For the purpose, this life is for the purpose of self realization and for the welfare of the world. When I close my eyes, I am in peace within. When I open my eyes, whoever comes in front of me, I think, I reflect, I ask, what can I do to make you feel better? In the words of the Vedanta, in the words of Vivekananda, he is saying, Realize the supreme divinity within. Step one. Realize the divinity chaturtham, that ekam advaitam, anandam, within. And second step. Express the divinity in every walk of our life, in every event of our life. Today is also... Holy Mother Sharada, Vivekananda, Guruma, and Holy Concert of Paramahansa Ramakrishna's Tithi birthday. 24th December was her English calendar birthday, but being celebrated today as the 26th. Those of you who wish to visit, you may visit. There are functions going on in Sarada Mat and Ramakrishna Mat all over the world. And 1st of January is the Kalpataru day when Paramahansa Ramakrishna came out of the Samadhi and spread that oneness to many and who suddenly started experiencing the whole world became one as he blessed them. The many people around the world, mile long queue is waiting at the missions of Ramakrishna mission all over the world just to be blessed. Paramahansa Ramakrishna is not out there, he is within us. So is Holy Mother, so is Paramahansa Yogananda. It is his birthday is on 5th of January. The one Mukunda went from a simple household dweller from there took on the challenge of the world outside and noticed for a beautiful powerful organization is built for liberation of the mankind of west and east and the people of the world together my prayers to jesus christ at the holy time to our Gurudevas, Paramahansa Yogananda, Sri Sri Yukteswar Giri, Lahiri Mahasai. To Swami Vivekananda, Holy Mother Sharada, to Paramahansa Ramakrishna. To the Divine Mother of the Universe, to Krishna, to Brahma Vishnu Maheshwara, to Kalpa Yogi Mahavatar Babaji, and knowing and knowing very strongly that entire every one of this being are none other than you and me as one. We are Paramahansa Yogananda Yukte Shargiri Lari Mahasai. We are one. We are one with Vivekananda, Holy Mother Sharada, Paramahansa Ramakrishna. One with Mahavatar Babaji, the Krishna, Yogakshema Vaham Vaham, and Holy Mother, Divine Mother. How can we be all and be in case in this body? It is like the blue, beautiful sky, infinite sky. We look at it as blue. We know it is blue, and then we know because of our studies and education that this color is not blue. 
it has no color but yet in this time of the day it's blue early morning late evening it is pink and orange and of shades of brilliant color sometimes at night it is dark but that sky be that whatever it is we love to look at it maybe various forms but we love to look at it and enjoy the vastness whether in blue or shades of color or black with the shining stars just as that we love watching the waves and the ocean and the ripples in the river and we know the vast expanse of the water is only one and same is the awareness of you and me that oneness ekam advaitam you and me we all are one my prayers for peace and protection to this physical body and the name and the form for us to be enlightened to know that status of oneness with everyone and not separatedness with name body and the form we must take care of the name and the body and the form by rightful actions with truth with kindness with love and purity and yet keeping in mind all the time we are one jagger you have any question you're welcome to ask any doubts any question <laughs> let me remind you that one beautiful story of the washerman washing his clothes with a stone that stone was always with him one day he decided the this stone looks very nice let me go down and ask my vegetable vendor he's smarter than me is a businessman what does he think of this stone he takes it from the river bank on his way back and the vegetable vendor says it looks very nice i'll give you 10 kg of brinjal the washerman was tempted 10 kg brinjal was very expensive but he chose not to sell it he went to the clothes merchant and the gold merchant and then the diamond merchant and there he realized it's one huge piece of diamond and the diamond merchant very honest gives him crores of rupees all the suffering of the washerman vanished by what atma satyanubhudena he realized this is what it mean mano so he abani bhave realize the true state of who we are and krishna in the 13th chapter is telling arjuna the same thing if you only realize that there is this consciousness in everyone and that is none other than i am there in everyone that is you too and i too and all of us i wish you good luck and wish you a very happy new year may 2022 the total number is 2 2 2 make 6 It's supposed to be very powerful for everybody very good and all the covid 19s and effects you are shielded by the special power nothing can touch you believe in it know in it and walk what we talk jagrat